if any happen, you just want to handle them? Or you feel comfortable? Sure. I could probably learn a couple things from uh, from you with how you handle them. Alrighty. Like last year, we didn't have no problem with them. They actually said, hey, you can stand wherever. And well, usually just when they know that you are aware of your First Amendment and you're willing to stand for your First Amendment, you don't get shaken easily. I brought a list of the laws. Yeah, this, that'll uh, be great. Or uh, the list of the court hearings that we're going to have. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people have said that they're Christian down here, man. Everybody's a Christian. Oh, yeah, everybody's a Christian until you start preaching holiness. Yeah. So we're going to go... We're going to go up to this block, we're going to walk over, and that intersection will be right in front of every, you know, this okay. key location. Um, they have a psychic, great little psychic booth and everything here. Right? We'll find a good place to preach. How you fellas doing today? Oh, nothing, I'm talking. Oh, it's okay. oh, no, you, guys. you fellas ready for the return of Christ? You guys ready for the return of Christ? Am I ready or you said we're well, already here? No, he's coming. He's not coming back the same way. He's not coming back the same way he was on the planet, though. He's coming back to judge. Either way, we're all gone anyway. Nah, if we repent and we get right with him, you'll be one of his saved. You gotta be born again. We're all, we're all gone in the physical way we're going anyway. Oh, your physical body's gonna perish, but you're eternally created. You have a soul that's meant to live forever and it's going somewhere. Heaven or hell, one of the two. We're in hell, man. No, this isn't hell. It gets much worse. I like the casino too much. What's that? It's the likes the casino too much. You know what? That's only because you're lost in sin. What? But if you would repent, that means have a change of mind about yeah, your sin. I have changed everything, every single thing about me. No, you gotta re you gotta change your thoughts and how you feel about sin. Christ will give you the power over your sin. I believe in God and all that, but there's no, I've read the Bible, there's no distinctive way of how you should act other than being kind. Certainly there is. He says, without other, other, holiness, other none being, shall see the other, Lord. Other than being kind to the next man. How about 1 Corinthians chapter 6? He says that the drunkard shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The fornicator shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The liar shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The homosexual shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So he gives a list. These are their sins. Of, well, it's not commandments. It's what's written on our heart once we're born again. It's the dictionary that depicts all depicts the Bible in heart. The Holy Dictionary. Well, you ever, you ever, you ever read that? Lots of people try to pick the Bible no, no, part. No, it's the dictionary. It's the Strong's there. Concordance. Uh, no, it's the it gives you the Hebrew and the Greek? Uh, I believe so. It's, uh, it came on my John Paul I first book. I got the one from 1902. Yeah. Big, big book. Pope John Paul I. Well, see, there, there's the deception, like Catholicism. Catholicism leads. I, I, I bought a couple of auction houses. Uh, What's that? I bought a couple of auction houses. Yeah. And, uh, the older people that lived there. Yeah. So, like I mean, they, they were so like their minds were so like by, by the variety. Like there's a uh, five language Quran in there. Right yeah. Now, right next to the John Paul the first book. Now this is the first. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All original 1900. There were so many different versions of different like so many different religions. Yeah. You know, a lot of the religions go hand in hand and no one knows that. Well, that's what they say, but I found that to be erroneous. Certain parts of it. Well, and that's the devil's deception. The Bible says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Just a little bit of lies disturbs all the truth. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm saying like the way they... Oh yeah, they, and that's the devil's tactic. He wants to keep us confused. But Jesus said this. Jesus gave a really simple, and he he made it. This is uh, kind of exclusive. Jesus said, "I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man can come to the Father except through me." So, and the Bible says this. He became the author of eternal salvation to them which obey him. So, in order to be saved, we must be willing to obey Jesus Christ. Not anything else, but the person of Jesus Christ. Well, it's it's acknowledging Jesus Christ as Lord, being willing to turn from our sin. Well, you know, and yeah, and that's kind of well, no, that's kind of where I started. Well, here's 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 how you know, all right? God, God said He'd give us a proof. Understand what I'm saying? I'm not even because you want to be part of all that shit, but you gotta acknowledge and give an understanding to 
to like not even with religion, just everything else to the other side. Right? Well, I mean, studying it, studying it for the apologetics, so you know that how to like if if I run into a Muslim, I know how to talk to a Muslim because of what he believes. That doesn't necessarily mean that I believe that. No, absolutely not. No. Je when Jesus made that exclusion, when he said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Now the job of the Christian is to show everybody who has been deceived by the devil. And that's what the Bible says. No matter what religion they follow, they've been deceived by a demon to follow that religion. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And he, he said, he who the sun sets free is free indeed. So when we come to Christ, we see the error in what we believe. I don't know. I'm, I'm not even from here. <laughs> Where are you from? Buffalo. Buffalo. I'm from Uniontown. It's... Yeah. Hey, Ash, give me one of those Gospels with John. I'm going to give you a Gospel of John. You slide it in your pocket, read it when you're done doing whatever you're doing. It's my son. He came out to evangelize with us. PA, yeah. There you go. Just read it when you get opportunity. Well, here's and here's the thing. In glancing through a little bit of everything, there's only one, one God. Yeah, and that's that's where you get deceived because it's about false religion then. And it's hypocrisy, and it leaves you in sin. Yours. Episcopalian? Yeah, they ordain homos. No, I'm saying fucking that was just me and the pastor was cool at the end of the block. Yeah. Yeah. So we all go down there showing some love. They go to me, more or less. Well, before I, yeah. well, think of this, Jesus, I, and think of this though. Jesus came and he he came right for the throat of uh, the traditions of men. So. Even in Catholicism, what is it? Why are people Catholic? Because of their tradition. And so, you know, they pass it down. But Jesus came straight for the throat of that. Yeah. Greek Orthodox. Well, here's here's the crux. Before we leave, let me let me say this to you real quick. At the end of the day. We know whether or not we're right with God when we lay down because the Bible says the test is this after examining ourselves. Does his spirit reside within us? And if not, we need to see why that is. The Bible says it's sin that separates us from God. And if that's the case, we must be willing to turn from it and look to Jesus Christ. Well, Jesus said it's a very narrow way. And that, you know, you're right there and you know what that's what the Bible the Bible actually talks about the hypocrites and the Bible says there are those who honor me with their mouth but their hearts are far from me what Jesus wants is a genuineness he wants us I used listen I used to shoot dope I used to, I did a bunch of vile things and you know what happened when I really met Jesus Christ you know what happened when I really met Jesus Christ? He set me free from my sin and caused me to follow him. The evidence of knowing you're right with God. My family's real big in church. Yeah. And it's like I'm saying, every part of my family is a different style church they go to. You know what I'm saying? Well, see, but the responsibility is going to fall on you. I'm saying, I get a little bit of just like every... It doesn't matter what they're doing. No, I'm saying, I get a little bit of every opinion. Yeah, you don't need to... Listen, get you a Bible. I'm not saying what I believe. I'm saying I just see everyone's different... Get you a Bible, sit down, pray to God, ask Him to reveal His truth to you. Now, seek, listen, seek God till He answers. I mean, no, I'm saying, I ain't got no... Willing to repent. Well, and think of this, though. If, if we're sinners, if we remain in sin, the Bible says He doesn't hear the prayers. David, David said this. David said, if I regard iniquity within my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So if we continue in sin, we don't have an ear with God. He said, you must be born again to, to see the kingdom of God. I got a run though, man. All right. Hey, think about everything you heard, all right? I will. Brother, I hope you take it to heart, man. Yeah, think about what I said, man. What I'll street are we going to, Brother Scott? Yeah, about six <laughs> we months, passed man. her up. This is okay. Hey, man, it was a good conversation. Yes, sir. <laughs> 
gave him something to think about. Isaiah, that's the guy's name. What was the other guy's name? You get him or not? I forget that's his name. Okay, no, yeah. God knows his name. I have a habit of doing that too. I forget lots yeah. of names. I uh I forget names when people tell me, so I got it on the GoPro sometimes I'll go back and just He said, I don't care. I'm going to hell anyway. I said, Man, that's the it doesn't have to be to so. Amen. You don't have to go to hell. Hey, Ash, just keep the Gospels ready, all right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Got a couple of these uh, who cares and everything. And goes through the worldly sin. You got those Gospels of John's for free, right? Yeah, they send you a hundred yeah. at a time. A buddy get, got, um, got them too, and I... I started looking through because you gave me one. I was looking. I was like, "Oh, you know, that's pretty good, man." Because they label it. Uh, you know, each page has like a a label in the scriptures. And uh -huh. page, so it's pretty easy for people to get involved. If you, uh, I'll I'll send you the link to the uh, Gospels of John. If yeah. you, um, all you got to do is give them a short email telling them what you're going to be doing. You know, evangelizing and whatnot, and uh. They'll send you a hundred, no problem. They sent Brother uh, Tony like three hundred. How much are they going to cost? Nothing, they're nothing. Free. They send them to you for free. Nice. If you're an evangelist, they're going to send you, send them to you. Yeah, that's really good, man. Yeah. Uh, I'll let you know they got a Christian group down here called CMA. Yeah. Uh, Christian Motorcycle Association. It's a lukewarm man. Yeah. They party, you know. Well. Stuff like that. If so, they're party, you know, get rebuked. Yeah. Yeah. Some people, uh, they, they got me confused last year with being with that group. And I yeah. said, no, no, no. I said, we don't associate with them, man. Amen. Yeah. Teaching the Bible it tells us to be separate. Sure, you don't want to spend a night? Nah, we're probably going to try to. If, I mean, if I get too tired on the way home, we'll probably just, you know, find a hotel real quick. Well, let but, me know if that happens. I'll, I'll get the, uh, I'll order it on, on it, uh, what's it, Trivago. Yeah. I'll order it for you guys. Oh, awesome. Thank you, you brother. Hey, yeah, man. Yeah. You don't have to do that. Well, no, that, we, we want to make sure that, you know, you guys good, man. We're glad to be here, brother. <laughs> we, we, man, we're blessed that you come to labor the streets of Erie, man. man. Yeah, if you guys didn't come today, I would have been down here by myself. Yeah. Uh, so it was just so happened that God, you know, played that out. Just oh, God bless you for your faithfulness, brother. How you guys doing? How you doing, brother? How's it going? Okay. Yeah. And then we're only about a block away from the intersection we'll be preaching at. Set up. Is that where you preached last year? Yeah, yeah, it worked really good, man. I mean, you'll get an occasional bike that'll come like right next to you. Just yeah. Vroom, vroom, you know? But well, this thing could try to drain it out. It does pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Plus, it's elevated. That's yeah. That's good, man. I went down here last yesterday to the parade. I didn't preach. I was just uh, being invisible for, with the banner. Yeah. And uh, the guys were handing out Bibles right at the same intersection. And they didn't want nothing to do with yeah. it. I said to the guy, he said, hey, brother, how you doing? He just looked at me like he, was, he did not want to talk. Like you're a different kind of Christian. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you run into those kinds. Well, the funny thing about that is, the funny thing about that is, People were just walking left, you know, back and forth past them, but people were coming to me and having conversation. I didn't even see them have a conversation with anybody, you know. You know it's, uh, I mean, you can pass out literature, but yeah. you're not talking to anybody. Faith comes by hearing. Yeah. That's right. I guess at least they doing something. Yeah, that's right. Know. At least they're out in the streets. Yeah. It's better than a lot of Christians.
And you know what? It's the word of God, so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just passing out tracks is a, a big, thing. big deal. Yeah. yeah. yeah like, There's lots of people get saved by tracks, but you just got to get out there. You got to yeah. go. I think it was, oh man, is it A.W. Tozer that said a, a street preacher played a, a key role in him coming to the Lord? Yeah. And everything. So just like, I think Billy know, Sunday too. Billy Sunday too. Mm -hmm. You never know who the next, you know, next That's person right. will be that they'll have a huge impact later on in the kingdom. Where are we going? Right down here. Yeah, we uh, go one block down. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it seems like there's lots of people. How are you folks doing tonight? Christos Vianes Prontos. So that's the intersection I preached at last year. Um, they have a, a concert going on, so maybe we can find a location. It looks like still a lot of families are out there. Yeah. I mean, this corner is fine. Yeah. All right, Ash, let me get a sign. I'll take the black one. You want me to preach first? If you'd like. Ash, you want to hold the bullhorn? I'll get Brother Scott set up. Hold that for a second. People. Okay. Do that. That'll be fine. Want to do that? Yep. Okay, let's do that. Let me hook, hook this, this up just so we're already yeah. on. Yeah. That way, more people. This is the rainbow crosswalk they painted on the street. Ah, yeah. that's horrible. <laughs> you want to carry that? You better. I don't want to drop it. Okay. Yeah, there'll be a lot more people than. But let's let's try to get away from any music so it kind of doesn't interfere with the street. Okay. okay. That's the warning we have. Jesus came preaching. Hey. The first message was repent. God bless you. The kingdom of God. The message. Amen. Listen, you Christian? Absolutely. You got to dump out that booze, man. Your body's a temple of the Holy Ghost. Hey. He said no drunkard will inherit the kingdom of God. He said there is a holiness without which none shall see the Lord. Would, would you say that's, that's your life today, that you're living a holy life for God, separated from the world? Flawless one, no. A separated life. He said... He who has friendship with the world makes himself an enemy of God. So the Are fact, you? Yes, yes. I'm separated from the world today. And Jesus Christ saved me from a multitude of sins. I was one of the worst sinners. Hey, man, carry the message. I appreciate it. Listen, you got to turn from your sins. Good. Jesus Christ is coming back. Jesus is coming back, man. Do you think that that would be better with no music? Wherever you want to go, brother. All right. I mean, they got music over there and over here. Look, you 
would think that would be better, you said, without music, right? Yeah, any, just somewhere, you know, to set up. Okay. Well, I mean, we could go back there then. Just I mean, we could set up down here okay, for all I care. Yeah,
No one knows when their heart's going to stop beating. No one knows when their lungs are going to stop breathing. And the point is, you need to be right with God today. For the Bible says, He shall come upon you as a thief in the night, at a time that you know not. You think that you're going to get prepared one day to meet God. But you're going to be unprepared. you got to be right with God today. If Jesus Christ came back tonight, how many people here would be thrown into the lake of fire? For the Bible says, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The drunkard shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The fornicator, those who have sex outside of marriage, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The homosexual shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The effeminate shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the good news is, the Bible says, and such were some of you. There is a hope for you. Whether you're on the list, if you were on that list, if you were willing to repent, to change your mind about your filthy sin, and look to Jesus Christ who gave his life as a sacrifice or as a ransom for many and receive him as Lord. He would give you a new life. I'm loving you right now with the truth. The Bible says love does not rejoice in iniquity, but love rejoices in the truth. So we're out here today to warn you there is a holy God who takes vengeance on his adversaries and he's coming as a thief in the night. How many people here just are in the lottery that tonight could be the night that your ticket is pulled and you stand before a holy God whom you have rejected your entire life. Yet he stands right now waiting open with open arms calling you and beckoning you. Come, repent of your sin. Be born again. The Bible says marvel not that I said you must be born again. For except, you be, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Listen, Satan ain't going to help you whenever your heart stops. You're going to stand before a holy God and he's going to judge you. You're going to be judged for each and every one of your sins and that eternally. Jesus Christ is a just judge. And not only is he a just judge, but he's also your character witness. He has been present. His spirit has been present every time you've sinned. And he's going to call you into account for such sin. You will stand before God. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. And then the judgment. Immediately after your heart stops, all your mocking will stop. All your laughter will stop. All your security in this life will cease to exist. And you will stand before God, laid open bare, giving, a, giving an account for your sins. And the biggest, the biggest question will be, why did, what did you do with my son Jesus Christ? The one who laid down his life to save you from your sin. Your answer, your answer will only be, I mocked him. I scoffed at him. I laughed at him. I chose not to receive the free gift that God offers. I'd rather have my sin and my pleasure in this life. Now that eternal life is before me, I can't grasp it. See, it's just like in the days of Noah. The Bible says that in the days of Noah, they were eating and drinking and giving in marriage. They were having a good time at biker rallies, we could say. They were living their life, living it up like there was never going to be a day of judgment to come. Wow, and they, they mocked Noah, building, building a boat in the middle of nowhere. They said, what do you mean judgment's going to come? And Noah, a preacher of righteousness, I'm certain, told them, listen, judgment's coming. Judgment's coming. Repent. Get right with God. And they all laughed. They all continued mocking. They all had one more drink, one more night of sin. And then in one day, the flood came. God shut up the door. There is no more grace to be offered. Judgment came upon them. And there were only eight people that survived that judgment. Now the Bible says that today there are few that are saved. Why? Because narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. There are few who find it. Broad is the way that leads to eternal destruction and many go thereby. Are you on the narrow way today? Are you right with God? Or are you mocking him, chugging your beer, laughing at his message when men come out to warn you and tell you there's a holy God who you have made yourself an enemy against? The Bible says that those who walk according to the flesh have set themselves as enemies of God. 
Are you an enemy of God today, choosing rather to live in sinful pleasure rather than repenting of your sin? You're going to stand before him, and it could be this night that your soul is required of you. This, imagine the people who mock God and their night required of them this night. This night standing before a holy God after you laughed at him and mocked him. Standing before him. No, sir. I'm going to stand here and you're going to hear the message that you need to hear. Not by invitation, but because it's what's best for you. You need to hear it and take heed. There is a judgment coming. Listen, if, if, if I knew there was a storm coming that would wipe everybody here out, how unloving would I be to not warn you? I'm telling you tonight, I know there's a storm coming. I know there's a storm coming. And it's going to wipe every sinner out who doesn't repent and turn from their sin. His name is Jesus Christ, the just judge. The Bible says that he will raise the dead to be judged. It says that you will be he will uh, judge the quick and the dead. There will be no escape from the judgment of Jesus Christ. And he's coming. The Bible, he said, behold, I come quickly. Jesus Christ is going to sneak up on them. There are many who are professing Christians here tonight, drinking their beer right alongside the world. They may have said a prayer in front of a church. They may have even gotten baptized. But God says this, there are those who profess to know God, but they deny Him in their deeds. There are those who honor God with their mouth, but their hearts are far from Him. That's what, listen, that's what every lost sinner tries to excuse, tries to convince everybody that Jesus was a drunkard or a wine bibber. You know they did that in Jesus' day? Jesus was a drunkard. No, Jesus condemned drunkenness. That's why we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, the drunkard shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Jesus wasn't contradicting himself. The Bible tells us the drunkard shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And the Bible says, do not be filled with much wine, which leads to debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. See, the two are opposing opposites. You can't be drunk and filled with the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord would bring you sobriety, sound mind, clarity of mind, a, a, a knowing what God calls you to do and how He calls you to live, a desire to please Him. The Bible tells us that Jesus became the author of eternal salvation to them which obey Him. See, if you want salvation from Jesus, you must be willing to obey Him, must be willing to repent. That word repent means to change your mind. Turn away from your sin. The way, the way you once loved sin, you begin to detest it. You, you begin to see how it's found before a holy God. And you're willing to turn away from it and look for Jesus Christ to be saved. If you're willing to turn from your sin, Jesus Christ will give you the power to turn from your sin. And He will give you new desires. That's a promise. I stand here as a person who was in the deepest of sin. But when I met the person of Jesus Christ, He set me free. He kept His promise. The Bible says that He who the Son sets free is free indeed. That means you're, you're no longer going to continue in drunkenness. You're no longer going to be a fornicator. But it comes to you making that decision and say, you know what, I'm going to trust Jesus. And it may be the little action of dumping out your beer and saying, you know what, I'm going to go home and I'm going to pray to God and ask Him to save me. And guess what? He will not he will not turn you away. If you come to Him with a humble heart, if you come to Him contrite over your sin, asking Him, Lord, save me. I need to be saved. I need your spirit. I need the new life that you promise. He'll give it to you. He'll give you that new life. He'll give you the power to walk in a newness of life. But you got to be willing. What a small price to pay turning from your sin to follow Jesus Christ. What a small price to pay. And when we think of the price that He paid, that He took the mockings and the scorning, just like people mocking His message today. Jesus took that upon Himself. People mocked Jesus, and Jesus said, if they hated me, they will hate you also. Listen, I know I'm going to stand here and be hated by every, almost every person coming through here, and they're going to mock us. You know why? Jesus said so. But that's all right. This message, for those who believe, will be the remedy for their sin. They will become born again. It doesn't matter if this world mocks you because we're not of this world any longer. When, when we give our life to Christ and we become born again, He says you are not of this world any longer. Now you're, you set your mind on the things of heaven, on the things of the Spirit. Fantastic. Have you made that turn from sin and the things of this world to follow Jesus Christ? Jesus said, 
Anyone who wants to be my disciple must pick up his cross, deny himself, and follow after me. For those who would profess to know Jesus Christ, are you following after him? Are you bearing a cross? Does your life model the life of Jesus Christ? Does it look like the life of his disciples? Do you care what the words of Jesus said? The Bible says, the Bible says that those who continue in my word are my disciples indeed. That's a Catholic priest. Yeah, I don't know what you're doing, but you got to turn it down a little bit. Then these bikes have to turn it down. <laughs> Listen, the, fr the First Amendment carries with it the right to be heard. So with all these bikes, we have the same decibel right as every bike here, every absolutely, stereo. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, what I'm saying is, can you walk with it? No, no, we think this is the optimal space. This is uh, the private property that we, we feel is probably the best for us to get our message out okay. and to practice our First Amendment. All right, can you move a little bit? Reason being is because if people are stationary and you're blocking the street, it's city ordinance, or blocking the sidewalk, city ordinance. Hi, how you doing? I talked to you last time. Yes, didn't yes, I? Sir, how you doing? Yeah, you like pushing it. Huh? You like pushing pra it. Hold on, practicing a First Amendment right no, is pushing nope. it? I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. Okay. I'm talking about city ordinances, about being stationary. The Constitution the trumps any city ordinance. I went to city it's, it's, hall. That's okay. the federal laws of the okay, United States. It? Yes, yes. Okay. I will stand on Absolutely. my First Amendment right. Yes, sir. Here, Absolutely. have a gospel, John. Just just move a little bit. Oh, okay, every what? what what's just the ordinance say? The what's the ordinance say how often we have to move or how long we can stay? It says stationary. So whatever you think. Okay, then why would you come to us and not anybody else who's stationary? You know, yeah, it's, man. it's the discrimination you know of the message. They're complaining. That's all right, and they're all right. listen. They're allowed. I still have a First Amendment right. You're I'm right. not breaking Absolutely. any law. Absolutely. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, what I'm what I'm saying is you're getting complained on. Well, as long as I'm not breaking the law, you know, there's really, they can complain. Well, then I'm complaining about every motorcycle. Well, I am too, because I ain't got to be down here. So, are, are we going to start stopping the motorcycles, telling them they have to keep it down? Or? What's your legitimate question? Yes, sir. Why are you here? So, you will hear the message of the gospel, turn from your sin, and be saved. Believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. You're saying bikers are sinners? I'm saying that drunkards are sinners. I'm saying fornicators are sinners. I'm saying homosexuals are sinners. Everybody who isn't born sex. again. Yes, had... I was once a sinner. You I was, listen. listen. You the law enforcement is a sinner. So you oh, no. No, faith. that's not what the Bible Were says. Were you baptized hey, after you sinned? Were I baptized? At, yeah, because I was born again. Okay, did you sin after that? Not everybody a sinner unto sinned. death. No, listen, sinned. the Bible says everybody has sinned. Mind. That's past tense. Yeah. We're talking about sins unto death. And sins not unto death. The Bible makes a distinction. It gives us a list of sins that lead to hell and that will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay? So the this, this so being down here, we ain't going to heaven? I don't know. Yeah, but we're going to heaven. You're going to heaven. Well, you ride a motorcycle. You're not fucking going What's the merits of your What's your What's your merits? No, listen. Your booze, your booze, your drunkenness, your fornication. Booze, fornication, drunkenness, homosexuality. These are that's why people don't go to heaven because they're not born again. Filthy, body mouth leads you right to hell. It only shows your wicked heart. Yes, sir. I got. I got. So the Bible says. Out of the abundance of the mouth, the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So your foul, potty mouth actually shows that you need to get right with God. The way you want to curse, your guzzling of booze shows that you really need to get right with God. But the Bible says this: there's a free gift for you. Jesus Christ laid down His life on your behalf. He took the suffering that you deserve. He took the judgment that belongs to you upon Himself. His flesh was ripped apart. He was brutally beaten. That ain't a good thing, motherfucker! It's that easy, homie. That easy, I can still preach. So the Bible says... Deal. Excuse me, hit officer. Me. Hit me, right officer. here, baby. Hit me. Stop. Stop. Hit me. Officer. Stop. I am officer. an officer. Officer. Marshal. Stop. Whoa. Officer, we're being assaulted over here. We're being assaulted over here. Can't touch their stuff. That's all I'm saying. Can touch whatever. Well, then you're going to go to jail. Our First Amendment right has to be protected. Stop. 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 Hey. You are doing the fucking America justice right now, brother. I got a pretty crazy.
You gotta bring your own microphone, homie. Uh, sir. Will you compromise and just not use the microphone? No, no, absolutely not. Okay. We gotta get I, over. I had to ask. We, yeah. So the Bible, the Bible tells us. Whoa! your Bible on now? Stop! Officer, we're being assaulted. They're, they're destroying our property. That's against the law. This man right here, this man right here is destroying our property. Thank you. Do you have anything? Can you point it that way? So what we see here is the heathen raging, is what the Bible says. He's not mad at us. He's mad at the Lord, but he can't get his hands on the Lord. So he's going to go after the Lord's ministers. He's going to. The Bible says, "Marvel not that the world hates you." We know that those who love their sin will hate the message, but we still need to preach it to you. You still have to hear the message of the cross that you might be saved. See, that's the enemy's way of trying to stop you from hearing the message of the cross but every sinner needs to hear this that there is a way to be saved that God gave his only begotten son God gave his son on your behalf his son was mocked his son was spat upon his son bore a cruel rugged cross on your behalf and he stood in the place of you before a holy God every sin that you've ever committed Jesus Christ took upon himself the Bible says that he who knew no sin became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. But there's something you have to do to receive that to your account. Jesus came, his very first message, he came preaching, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand, or repent, the kingdom of God is available to you. God has made the kingdom, no son, I'm only a servant of God, please get up, get up, get up. And that's through his son, Jesus Christ. The Bible says, the Bible says there is no other name whereby man must be saved. No other name is given whereby man must be saved. Listen, you need to turn from your sin, sir. No other name given. For there is only one way, one mediator. There is not a saint you can pray to. You can't go through St. Mary, you can't go through St. Paul, there is only one way, and that's Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and no man, no woman, can come to the Father except by me. So today, we want you to know that if you have air in your lungs, if you have a beating heart, if you have life in you, Jesus is offering his hand out to you and beckoning you, come, turn away from your sin and live. You must be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So let me ask you this. Is there evidence in your life that you've become born again? Has your heart been converted? Have you turned from your sin and death to Jesus Christ in life? The Bible says that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he comes in many ways to do so. He'll offer you a bottle. He'll offer you drugs. He'll offer you fornication. He'll offer you all kind of illicit sex. Yes, there, but that judgment, that laughter, that mocking will stop. The Bible says that in the last days there will be mockers. There will be scoffers. Many people will laugh at the message that is freely given to them. And they will say things like the Bible's not true, or Jesus doesn't exist. But really what they're doing is they're like an ostrich sticking their head in the sand. You better hope that it's not true, but the fact it is, it is true. That's the fact. Jesus Christ is going to judge you. And you need to get right with God before he returns, before your heart stops, before you get in a drunken motorcycle accident, before you get in a bar brawl where your life is taken from you at a time which you didn't know. Yeah, death comes as a surprise. Jesus said it. he comes upon you as a thief in the night, in a day which you know not. You don't plan for death. No one has their bags packed, ready to go to hell. That's why you need to get right with God today. That's why you need to give your life to God today. You must be born again today. For it is appointed on to man once to 
to die and then the judgment. Everybody has an appointment with God. You will stand before a holy God and we're going to give an account. The Bible says all of us shall give an account. We shall all stand before God. Each and every person screaming with a beer in their hand. Each and every person standing and mocking. You will give an account to God as to why you resisted his grace. Why you turned away from his free gift. Why you chose your sin rather than the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The Bible said your soul is in jeopardy. You're on your way to hell. Please repent and get right with God. God gave away. He opened a door unto you for you to come on to him and receive eternal life. You know, if I was standing here selling books, I dare say that many people wouldn't be angry. If I was standing here selling hot dogs, no one would get upset. But the fact that everybody gets upset just because I'm telling you about Jesus shows the truth in it. Shows that demons are manifesting themselves as the truth to lead you astray. Why do you hate the message? Why does it bother you so much? If it wasn't that powerful, you would just mosey on. You hear all kind of music that you don't agree with, you hear all kind of messages you don't agree with, and you still just walk on. But at the name of Jesus, the demons that control you get you stirred up and you hate the message. And you start reading, and you start renting your garments and you start gnashing your teeth and coming against the message in one accord. Why? Because it's the truth. It's the truth. No, sir, go talk to him. I won't continue preaching. Today is the day to get saved. I didn't say everybody. I'm saying the majority. Because the Bible says there are few who are on the Bible. Because the Bible says there are few who are on the narrow path. The Bible says so. Where do you get There are few who are saved. That's what Jesus says. And the Bible tells us you shall know them by their fruit. So if there are many drinking booze, how many do you think saved? The drunkard shall not inherit the kingdom of God. He drank wine. No, sir. No, the word wine in the Bible is actually used to say juice as well. It doesn't mean it was fermented grape juice. It means it was juice. That's why it was new wine. It was just crushed. He did drink wine. No. Do you study the Bible? Just look at your concordance. There's a concordance. I'm sorry, you have bad manners. You're in yelling in someone's face. That's, those are bad manners. Who raised you? Listen, everybody loses their manners when you start talking about Jesus. If there was no message, you could just go. But that should open your eyes and show you that there is a reason for this message to be preached. And there is a battle for your soul. There is a battle for your soul. And it's a spiritual battle. Thank you, sir. Can I say something to you? You can talk to him. I'm going to get to you. I want to say no, something really to you. Because you're the one speaking. Be I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather hold hold direct towards him. Hold on, let, if you don't mind, I did this. I, 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 I use my manner. I don't shit that you're saying. What? Ryan, right. back up for a second. I have something I'd like to say. People don't get mad because you're talking about Jesus. People get mad because they feel like you're shoving it down their throats. Well, that's it. That's all it is. Okay, listen. That's all it is. Okay, I'm just giving you a logical nobody standpoint. Believes. Okay, let me give you another logical standpoint. I, I'm Buddhist. There's uh, nothing uh, you can uh, say uh, to swing me I out. I feel though, bad for you. you got to turn from that. Uh, listen. At least everybody hears the word at least one point. They can logical. make their decision. That's right. Everybody can make their decision. That's right. And we're all we're, we're all accountable for our decision. That's right. I agree with you. That's right. So today, this gentleman said something that was very, very profound. We are all accountable for our decisions, each and every one of us. We're all free to make whatever decision we want. Listen, you, you want to drink beer, drink beer. You want to go get all jacked up, get jacked up. But there will be consequences for your sin. There will be consequences for your sin. You will answer to a holy God. That day is coming. How do we know? Because he told us, he warned us, and then he sends messengers out before you. Many of you would say, God, I would just like to hear from you. Well, he sent his messengers out into the street. He sent people out into the street. The Bible says that wisdom cries in the street. How many of you will give heed to it? How many of you will give heed to the message? Jesus Christ is coming. And he is going to judge the sinner. He's going to judge the drunkard. He's going to judge the fornicator. He's going... I'm sorry? Here, when you get opportunity, you give that to someone, okay? And you tell them, you tell them that they need to be saved. They need Jesus Christ to forgive them. They have to turn from their sin. 
He says he appreciates what you're doing. I heard him. Thank you, buddy. Thank Thanks you. for the encouragement. Yep, no so today, this may seem this may seem foolish to you, but the Bible says that the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them which perish. Sure, it sounds foolish, but that's just the evidence of you perishing, of you in danger of being judged eternally. That the fact that the message of the cross appears to be very, very dumb to you or very, very stupid. Why would you turn from your sin? It only shows the bondage of the sin that you're in. But the fact is that Jesus gives you opportunity to repent. Jesus gives you an opportunity to turn from your sin, to reconsider your sin, and look to Jesus Christ to be reconciled back to God. Because this is why Jesus Christ came, to reconcile God back to man. The Bible tells us the Bible tells us that men are estranged from God because of their sin. It's their sin that has separated them from a holy God. And God knows that in your weakness you have no ability to please Him in and of yourself. He knows if God knows that he, if He just left you to it, you'd never be able to make your way back to Him. And that's why God sent His Son to die on your behalf. So that there could be a way for you to receive power over your sin. So that you could be set free from your sin. So you could be delivered from your sin. So your sins could be washed and cleansed from you. The Bible says that He cleanses you from all unrighteousness. But you must be willing to obey Him. You must be willing to turn from those sins. And He'll give you that power. The Bible says that He gives you the promise of the Holy Ghost. That's the power that you, you receive over your sin. But He doesn't give this to just anybody. The Bible says that the world cannot receive the Holy Spirit. It's only when you're willing to turn from your sin. It's only when you're willing to dump out the booze. It's only when you're willing to stop fornicating. It's only when you're willing to live for Jesus Christ that you receive the power to live a life that's pleasing to Him. But as long as you turn away from Him, as long as you resist the message of the Gospel, you continue to be an enemy of God. That means on the day of judgment, you may have an idea, you may have this idea of Jesus that he's just receiving everybody with open arms. And that's true if you're turning from sin. But as long as you're holding your sin in your hands and you're not willing to be cleansed of all unrighteousness, you continue to be an enemy of God. The Bible says to have friendship with this world is to make yourself an enemy of God. Even those who are professing to know Jesus, even those who are professing to, to live for Jesus, but they still do the same things the world does. They still live exactly the same way. There's no change in their life. Their life hasn't been turned over to Jesus Christ. He says there are those who say they know God, but in their deeds they deny Him. Jesus said, woe to you, you hypocrites. For you honor me with your mouth, but your heart or for your hearts are far from me. He said, well, did Isaiah prophesy of you? See, Jesus won't accept our hypocrisy either. Thinking that we could party on Friday and Saturday night and then Sunday morning we're okay in church singing all the songs to God. The Bible says that the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination before God. But we must be purged of all the leaven. We must be willing to turn from our sin and offer up uh, cleansed hands. He said, cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your heart, you double-minded. Let your laughter be turned to mourning. Why are so many so joyous over their sin? It's only bringing death upon you. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. See, you could be made right with God this evening. You could, you could stand before a holy God and be made right. And what's it going to take? Well, you have to take the prescription. He said to repent. Change your mind about your sin. Begin to be sorrowful over your sin. Contrite, heartbroken at the fact that you sinned against the holy God. Just turn it where there's nothing in the front of it. The Bible tells us that you should have a godly sorrow. When you see your sin and how often you've sinned against the Holy God, it should bring about a godly sorrow to the fact that you've offended a Holy God and your sin before God is a vile and wicked thing. And it should cause you to be heartbroken over it. And he says godly sorrow 
worketh repentance means you start to reconsider that sin and it says unto salvation so you must be willing to be sorry for your sin and have a change of mind about your sin then Jesus Christ will save you but we can't say that we're right with God while continuing in sin he said because we are not under the law but under grace the Bible says the Bible says that uh, the Bible says that Jesus he is the way, he is the truth, and he what? is the Do you know what the Bible said? I, do you know what the Bible says? He, he, you here. had to switch off to him. You're out here protesting. You don't even I'm know not what the Bible says. I'm, I'm preaching, sir, and you're hearing it. That's why you're upset. I'm yeah. an Irish Christian. No, you're not. You're yes, not a Christian I am. at all, sir. No, the you need to be I'm not. I am a Christian. Christian. You may be Irish, you're no Christian, sir. I'm an Irish Christian. I go to a Christian church every Sunday. That, that, listen, you go to a garage or you go to, or are you going to be a so car. what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? The Bible says because you are not under the law but under grace, sin shall no longer have dominion over you. That means sin can't have power over you if you're really a Christian. You, The fact that you are drinking booze, getting drunk, and you live with this world, you look just like the world. And what, you do you, what do you do in a Christian church? How do you take the, how do you take the blood of God? God. What do you mean? How do you take the blood of how God? How do you take the blood of God in a when Christian he, church? See, oh, you're Catholic, huh? Yeah. That's false Christianity. That's okay. actually the oh, enemy. That, yes. That's oh, that's not real Christianity. No. That's so same we don't, religion. We don't believe in Jesus. Christ. No, you don't, not the Jesus of we the Bible. We don't believe Jesus Christ turned the fucking water to wine. And listen, your your words don't tell believe in the Bible. Yes, I do. Listen, that's, the Bible says that's not, in the Bible. Don't pray in vain repetition. Hail Mary. Turn water. Grace. Turn water to wine. Right. What, what's the word wine? Turn See, water to wine. No, it's not alcoholic wine. It's just the, the word the word you know, the word wine in the Bible also speaks of non-alcoholic wine. It can be used both ways. All you gotta do is look in the scripture. If you love God, you so can in the word. I have. I was the worst sinner. After not, you were baptized, I'm, you didn't appreciate Listen, listen, after, after I became born again, my desire to sin diminished. God gave me power over my sin because I began walking with him. He gave me his spirit. Now the Bible says that we should examine ourselves to see whether we're in the faith. Church. Going to a church building isn't a way that shows we're in the faith. You know what shows we're in the faith? The Bible says, by their fruit you shall know them. By the things they do, their actions, the way they conduct themselves. Now, now here on the hindsight, brother, you believe in God, right? Yes. Believe I believe in, in Jesus Christ heart. specifically. Yes. Do you believe he protects you? Yeah. Do you believe without these cops here, you're protected? Yes. I go to many places. Listen, did I show up with the cops or did the cops show up after I came? They showed up after do you believe you would make it out of here without the cops? I made it everywhere I went. And you know what? If I did die, that's what the word martyr means. Willing to die for the faith. Martyr. martyr. Oh, now you're going to Jerusalem. No, the word martyr means... Martyr is not in the Christian Bible. You sure? Because I got a Bible right here. Will you hold that, sir? I'll study scripture with you all night. You know why? Your soul is valuable. Now, you may not have had a Christian that stood with you and was willing to be combative with you, but I care about your soul. I want you to live and not die. Okay. I don't want you to go to hell. I live and die. We all are going to live and die. When I speak of death, I'm speaking of death eternally. Yes, sir. The police officer saying we cannot use the amplification. Sure we can. We have a First Amendment right. You have the First Amendment right to speak, not no. use amplification. Yes, we sure do. We have the All same right, right. right. everybody right else back. Yes. I'll be right back, and I'm going to bring you the book. Please do. I'm going to show the you the law. The Constitution trumps it. It's What's the, that? It, the Constitution no. trumps any order. No, no, no. Yes, sir. The That's, Constitution says you're allowed to speak. Yes. The and law the, says the you're first, not allowed to the amplify first amendment, it. The no, First Amendment no. carries with it the right to be heard. Okay. So because the first, there's... Listen. Bring your decibel readers, okay. you're coming. When the First Amendment was written, did you have electricity It doesn't then? matter. No. It still protects my no, First Amendment not. right. Yes, okay. sir. We're going to keep preaching. Hold on, hold on to your... And listen... I we, will be back we, with my ticket we book. We won. And I'm going, to bring, I'm going to show you That's all right. Citation. That's all right. Listen, we no, won no, many you, cases. You have the right to file an appeal. Yes, you're right. And we're going to continue preaching. I will be right back. Yes, sir. Hey, brother. When he comes back, it's probably best that, that uh, I, I preach on the megaphone because if the citation gets in my name, I'm already in Erie. You know, you yeah. guys want to have to keep traveling. Okay. So as soon as he comes back, I'll, I'll just grab it and All start right. preaching. Yes, sir. 100% you guys are in the right. Yes, sir. Here's your... Hey, hey listen, brothers. You you're allowed to use the Amplified. First time, like you said, I heard you. Yes, sir. 
You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you for believing what you guys do. Listen, you, I, I'm a deputy U.S. Marshal. Listen, I see you listening. Okay? I know. I am. Christ calls you. Listen, you need to go dump that out. My parents are both pastors. Listen, you need to go dump that out and get right with God. You ain't going to be saved on your parents' coattails. You need to get right with God and you need to do it tonight. You need to dump that out, fall on your face and ask God to forgive you. And I don't know if you were ever were right with God or you need to oh, for the first time. Right right no, no. No, no. No. You're not right with God. Not, not tonight. And I would dare say not the night before. I don't know when you fell away from God. But tonight, you're not right with God, and you need to get right with God, and you need to give your life to Him so you can have your heart regenerated, so you can be freed from your sin and live for Him. He said that we're to be salt and light. You're not being salt to anybody here. You're not being light to anybody here. You're fitting in with them. You look just like the unsaved world, sir, and you got to get right with God. And I know, listen, I know that's a tough thing to hear, but no, it's the no, truth. No, 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 no. I'm good with hearing that. I am. I've, I've been through shit. You're not. You're 100% right. But I have oh. your... Thank, Thank you. you guys for what you guys yes, are doing. Did you get one of these? No. Just put it in your back pocket in, in case you forget about the conversation we had tonight. Prayerfully in your mind. Okay. No. But thank you guys for what you do. What's your name, sir? Trevor. Trevor, my name's Sam. I'm going nice to pray for you, Trevor. Thank I'm going to remember to pray for you. Please do. Thank you for what you guys are doing. That's my son. I love it. Huh? I'm feeling good. I have tears right here. Go get right with God, man. No, you're 100%. So today, we stand here and we know we ruffle feathers. We know a lot of people don't like hearing how the wages of sin is death, how sin kills, how your drunkenness leads to hell, how fornication leads to hell. But the good news is that Jesus Christ died so that you didn't have to die in your sin. The Bible says that he who sins is a servant of sin. You can know whose servants you are tonight. What your life looked like. Who are you serving? Jesus said you can't serve two masters. You will love one and hate the other. So you either love the world and you love your sin and hate Jesus, or you love Jesus and you hate your sin and you hate the world and you're willing to, to turn away from death and turn on to life. But you can't do both. You can't live for the world and live for the kingdom of God. You can't have it both ways. In the book of Revelations, Jesus says, I would rather you be hot or cold, but because you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. Those are the words of Jesus Christ. Jesus said he would get rid of you. Jesus said that he would vomit you away from him. All uh, because there wasn't, there wasn't a decision made to follow him. All uh, because you were riding the fence. You were straddling the fence. One foot in the world, one foot in the church. You weren't sold out for Jesus. Jesus would rather you just go full on into the world than to be a professing Christian who looks just like the world. Let me grab. We're getting a, everyone's leaving right now. Can you just stand on the grass? Yeah, we go on the grass. Just stand on the grass. Okay, thank you. Yep. In all reality, they can't. What's that? What I want to preach to Jesus Christ. You're saying like Are you Jesus willing to turn from your sin? Yes. I heard your voice over there. She was Hallelujah. sleeping in the park. Next week. Hallelujah. She was in the park. Well, listen, we we want to pray for you. I'm Can you guys pray for me? We want to listen. We want to pray for you. But you that, know, you know that what happened. I, mean? I, I accept my Jesus when I when I'm nine years old. Okay. But the cross of and, How are you, you devil? The devil wanna do no surrender because I'm here is a liar. We rebuke him in the I'm name of Jesus. I'm in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You know, I heard you guys. And I walk over there and I see people dancing. They say, oh, you wanna go to Jesus? People, they are over there. This is, you got my family. Hallelujah. And you know, I told him, because I'm, my name is Teresa. Mama Teresa, uh, I, be, uh, I, I have uh, 19 years old in here in Pennsylvania. I came from uh, Sudan. And the uh, reason why I, I want to drink, you know, yeah. my reason is drink, but I'm not addicted. 
But when I find myself, Mike, I have to drink. Well, you got to run to Jesus now. This is what I want to do right now. Hallelujah. Listen, Jesus said this, okay? We're going to pray with you. But that in yeah. no way uh, has anything to do with yeah, your salvation. Yeah, I have to decide. That's right. And, and Jesus, the first message he came preaching was repent. For okay. the kingdom of God is at hand. I mean, change okay, your mind about your sin. Okay. The kingdom of God is, is available to it's you. It's over there. That's right. So when we're willing to turn from our sin and look to Jesus, the Bible says he became the author of eternal salvation yes, to yes. them which obey him. Yes. Our willingness to obey him and follow him at yes. all costs. Yes. When we, that means he's Lord. And when he's Lord, he gives us his spirit. We become his children. By adoption, we can cry out, Abba, Father. Now we have a connection with the Father. He's able to lead us. And not only that, he gives us power and victory over the sin. If we're coming to Jesus, he gives us that power as yes. his children. Listen, yes. Jesus is very loving and he loves, listen, he loves uh, each and every born again Christian. And he, he's willing to, to walk with them. In fact, he says, come to me all who are burdened and heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, upon you. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus is willing to yoke up with us, to, to walk with us as a companion, to lead us away from sin. He said that he would lead us not into yes. temptation. So when we're tempted, the Bible says that God is faithful and he provides a way out. Every time you're tempted to drink, look to God and he'll provide a way out. Even if you have to run from that poison, even if you have to flee from it, run with all your might to follow Jesus Christ. Give your life to him whole heartedly and don't give up don't give up never amen we want to pray you know, with you you know you know what i am right now i'm the woman from africa i have my man my man have house and down in up in his side and abuse me kick my kid out it's his kid too and you know she want me only with him and i say you know what I can be with you. This is our kid. This is why I'm living in shelter right now. You know shelter I live in? Yeah. It's eight street. Mary Grace shelter. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm in shelter my whole life. In my life right well, there. It doesn't it doesn't matter where you're at. I don't it doesn't care. matter. Amen. Listen, yes. no more fornicating, no more yes. sinful relationship. Follow Jesus. Jesus says, without holiness, none okay. shall see the Lord. Okay. So your life has to be given to okay. him. Don't okay. be willing to continue in sin. Okay. Be willing to follow Jesus with your all whole right. heart. And he'll give you all the power that you need when you call Amen. upon his name. Amen. Brother Scott, you want to pray? Yes, ma'am. What did you say your name was again? Uh, oh, Teresa. Teresa. Yeah, okay. Teresa. Teresa. Okay. Lord God, we thank you today uh, for Sister Teresa here. God, we thank you for the things that you're doing in her life, and we thank you for the, how you're working in her. And she came up here, and she just said that she wants to live for you, God. She, she is interested in, in having a deeper relationship with you, God. We ask that you continue to remind her, because there's so many distractions in this world that will try to get us away from you. I ask God that you continue to remind her each day yes, that you're Lord. there for her. Bring it to her memory that you you care for yes, her Lord. and that you'll be there through any situation. Hallelujah. If she would just grab onto you yes, Lord. and reach out to Jesus and make Amen. Jesus the Lord Hallelujah. of her life, to surrender everything, yes, to Lord. lay down her life, to lay everything Amen. and never look back, to never turn back to her sin, to leave it at the feet of Christ and to yes, just submit to your will. God, we ask for strength for Teresa because yes, we know Lord. that the enemy is angry. Hallelujah. We know the enemy will try to Hallelujah. get her to slip, but we ask that you strengthen her. Give her the strength she needs to get through the hard times yes, Lord. Uh, in the Thank future you, Lord. to come. We Thank ask that you, you be with her, bless her, watch yes, over her, Lord. protect her, and keep her safe. Yes, in Jesus' Lord. mighty name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we ask, Lord, that you would break every curse, Lord, off of her life in the name of Jesus, Lord. Every spirit of drunkenness that would try to follow her, Lord. Every spirit of fornication that would try to tempt her, God. Lord, any any vile, wicked spirit that would try to lead her off of the narrow path, Lord. We pray, Lord, that your spirit would guide her, Lord, until she enters into your gates, Lord, in the kingdom of God, Lord, until she sees your face, Lord. And, Lord, if she finds herself, Lord, being tempted, Lord, she would call upon your name, Lord, for your name is 
is a strong tower, and the righteous run to it, and they are saved, Lord. Lord, we pray and we believe right now, Lord, that uh, Teresa is being delivered by, by your great name, by the power of your blood, Lord. You are breaking the chains off of her right now in Jesus' mighty strong name, oh Lord. We praise you, God. We give you worship in the mighty strong name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that you give your children power and victory, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we overcome, Lord, by the blood of the Lamb, Lord, of the word of our testimony, and that we have not loved our lives unto death. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for our sister, Lord. Continue to guide her in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You continue following him, sister. He'll keep you strong. Listen, there's nothing this world has to offer you. We're surrounded by, by a bunch of dead people. You're alive in Christ now. You're alive in Christ. Hallelujah. Let us help you up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Go with God. Go with God. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, sister. Thank you. God bless you, Miss Teresa. I want you to know there is still power in the blood of Jesus. Listen, the devil may try to deceive you. The devil may try to tell you that that's some archaic thing. That the Bible is a book of antiquity. But I want to tell you the, the word of God is just as powerful today as it was 2,000 years ago. And it still has the power to set the vilest of sinners free. But the question is, will you believe it? Will you believe the word of God and be set free from your sin? To be delivered from the bondage thereof? Jesus said, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. There's only one way to be made free from your sin. And that's coming to Jesus Christ and be willing to be saved. Amen. You must be willing to be converted. The Bible says, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Though your sins are many, they could all be blotted out right here and now. They could all be blotted out at the moment you call upon the name of Jesus and you're willing to repent and you're willing to turn from your drunkenness and you're willing to turn of, turn away from the sin of sex outside of marriage and you're willing to turn away from homosexuality and you're willing to turn away from lying and thieving the moment you're willing to turn and look to Jesus Christ as the only way of salvation he'll blot them out and the Bible says that he'll cast them into the sea and he'll remember them no more He's, God says this in, in the word of God he says come let us reason together Though your sins are as red as scarlet, I'll make them as white as snow. You know how your sins are. You know how many sins you have. And you need to be forgiven. But there's only one way. He's not going to forgive you while you continue sinning against him. No, he won't. You must be willing to turn. You must be willing to cease your hostility towards God. You must be willing to become a friend of God. To turn away from your wickedness and look to Jesus Christ for salvation. There's coming a court date. You're going to stand in front of a holy God who is a holy and just judge. And he's going to look at every one of your sins and he is going to judge you accordingly. He is going to judge each and every sin that you have committed against him. Jesus is awesome. And if you don't get right with him, there will not be one sin that he forgets. There will not be one that he doesn't rehash and go over. There is not one that you will not have to give an account for. And that day is fast approaching. It's coming at a day which you know not. While you're eating, drinking, and giving in marriage, your heart could stop. Your heart could stop this very night. And this may be God's last effort to reach out to you for you to get prepared. There are many people who live lives just like you're living. Who thought they had forever. They thought they had their youth. And God snuffed them out at a very, very young age. When he had many days they thought to live. And they weren't prepared to meet a holy God. He snuck up on them as a thief in the night. Nobody has their bags packed to go to hell. Nobody's prepared for hell. All of a sudden, death creeps upon them. And they find themselves in torments, and from there they cast their eyes upward. 
And the Bible talks about that torment. Those who enter into the gates of hell. The Bible says that hell enlarges its borders to receive you. That doesn't mean that that means that hell's not going to be so packed there's not going to be room for you. There's going to be plenty of room for each and every person who rejects the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Hell will make room for you. Hell will enlarge its borders to receive you. Hell will leave a light on for you. I guess we could say that. And each and every person who rejects Jesus Christ. I have to go back, so that's fine. Good luck to you, all right? Yes, sir. Each and every person who rejects Jesus Christ will find themselves therein. The Bible calls it outer darkness, where there is weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. But Jesus Christ came to save you from that. He came to deliver you from hell. Can I talk he, in your microphone, No, brother? sir. No, sir. Fuck, man! Got to get your own microphone. But the Bible tells us that there is a remedy for hell. You could receive eternal life as a free gift that God offers to each and every individual. As long as you be willing to repent, to reconsider your sin and look to Jesus Christ, He would save you. The Bible says that uh, He would not break the bruised reed or snuff out the smoking flax. There's hope for you. As vile as you may be, there's hope for you. As wicked as you may be, there's hope for you. There is none that could look to Jesus Christ and say, I'm too wicked for you to save me. There's none who could look to Jesus Christ and say, I've committed too many sins for you to save me. It doesn't matter the magnitude of sin or the multitude of sin. Jesus Christ is able to save the vilest of sinners. And he only calls you to repent, to reconsider your sin and trust in Him as having the ability to save you through His work on the cross. Receive Jesus Christ as Lord. We talk to many people who say they believe in Jesus, but belief in Jesus alone isn't enough to save you. The Bible says that the demons believe, and they tremble, and the demons aren't saved. The Bible tells us that you must be willing to obey Jesus because He's the author of eternal salvation. So belief itself isn't enough to save. You must be willing to repent. You must be willing to reconsider your sin. You must be willing to dump out that booze and fall on your face and ask Jesus to forgive you. You must be willing to dump out your booze and say, Lord, I've sinned against you in the kingdom of God. Save me. Humble yourself in the sight of a mighty God. And in due season, He will exalt you. He will lift you up. God's in the saving business. Are you willing to be saved? He said, flee from this untoward generation or this wicked generation or this perverse generation. Flee from it. Run from it. Escape it. Why? Because the wrath of God comes upon it. The wrath of God is coming upon all the ungodly. All those who decide that they're going to live their life the way they want, how they want, they will not have God to rule over them. Basically, they shake their fist at the kingdom of heaven and say, I'm going to have it my way. We do not want this one to lord over us, but Jesus Christ will make your knee bow. Your tongue will confess whether you want to or not. That day is coming when God is going to chop block every sinner, every person who resisted him. But the Bible says this, God gives grace to the humble. He resists the proud. God resists the proud. So as long as you're proud in your sin, like, God, I'm going to have my night out. I'm going to enjoy bike weekend in Erie, Pennsylvania. I'm going to drink as much booze as I want. If you continue in your pride and your rebellion against God, you continue as an enemy of God. You continue to shake your fist and rant and rail against God. And on the day of judgment, you will not meet him as a friend. It doesn't matter what the preacher preaches at your funeral. Many of you, when you die, the preacher will say a lot of nice things about you. They will say how you're going to the kingdom of, he of heaven. All the while, you'll be in hell, weeping and wailing and gnashing your teeth with no escape. Hell has many ways to enter with no way out. But heaven has one way in. One way, and we're telling you that way tonight. Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man can come to the Father except by me. 
There's one way. That way is offered to whosoever will. The Bible says, whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It doesn't matter what, what sin you're in bondage to tonight. It doesn't matter what crime you've committed against God. If you're willing to call upon the name of Jesus, if you're willing to turn away from your sin, Jesus is willing to save you and give you eternal life. He offers you the promise of eternal life tonight. Will you take it? Will you be one who believes in Jesus? Will you be one who believes in Jesus? The Bible says, if scarcely the righteous are saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner stand? So there's a dichotomy there. There's the righteous, and then there's the ungodly and the sinner. And God says that if scarcely the righteous are saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner stand? So if you're, you're living an ungodly life tonight, if you're a professing sinner, I'm a sinner, I sin every day, you say things like that. Where shall you stand? That's the question the Bible asks. Because the Bible doesn't say that everybody's a sinner. The Bible says that all have sin, past tense. Jesus saves you from your sin. In fact, the Bible says, His name shall be called Jesus, for He shall save His people from their sin. So you got a potty mouth, you need to repent. Turn from your sin. Today is the day of salvation. You need to get right with God. It's scarcely the righteous who say. Can I talk to you? Yes, sir. Here, you want to preach? Yeah. Good. I'll this, talk to you. This is a guy that knows gospel, right? Yeah. Yeah. Come out here to tell you Knights about Templar, tell about Knights Templar, tell me about it. Say this. Knights Templar, tell me about it. False Catholic yeah. Army. Uh, the protectors of the Pope until he uh, is considered an anathema, the anathematized. They were sent out in other countries to kill all the religions. And then, and then the Pope anathematized them and he didn't count them off because that's, that's how the Catholic yeah, Church is. Yeah, because they're not there anymore, they used, right? No, he, he killed them. He had them anathematized. Said they were cursed. Yeah, I don't know. Yep, I just got real yep. high on some weed. Like, so you know about, about, about the next... This motherfucker that's preaching right now they didn't even know who the fucking Knights of Templar were. That's, they're not the Bible. No, they're not the Bible. No, they're not the Bible. That's just history. They're not in the Bible. That's just history of the Catholic Church. So, so you guys, you guys know everything. This guy's preaching knows everything, right? We know not. We know not what he's saying. In fact, and it doesn't take. Listen, the, the gospel is actually simple. It's, it, and the Bible tells us that we should actually become his children. To be it's not about how much you know. It's how much you trust. What is you can You're going to hell. You can interpret everything any way you want to. Do you know why the Bible is written? I, do you love the Word of God? Who wrote, who wrote the Bible? Several authors, but God. the Bible says all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God. God through His the Holy Spirit. Scrolls. You never even brought that up, but I'll bring it up to you. The Bible is brought up by the Dead Sea Scrolls. That's the Old Testament, you know, five books of the Bible. They were, that's where the Bible is originated. No, that's only five books of the Bible. It's called the Torah. Do you know where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found? I'm assuming over by Jerusalem. You're assuming. Yeah. You're assuming, but you can't but tell. What's this have to do with salvation? You can't tell. Okay, this You're is a big man of God, but you don't know where the fucking originators of the Bible what came from. What did they say about weed in the Bible? What? Weed? You'll go to hell for smoking. Yeah, listen, I'll tell you what. Oh, go to hell for smoking. Who smoked, smoked back in those days? Hold on. Uh, let me talk to you. I'll tell you why. I'll give you the like, Don't talk to this motherfucker. <laughs> let me you want to talk? You want to preach the Bible? You need to calm down. Give me one verse in the Dead Sea Scrolls. He tried preaching to you and I'm not going to love tell, tell me one verse in the Dead Sea Scrolls. I asked him a question. Thou shalt not kill. That was me though. Like, what, I brought that upon Thou shalt not, not come at Christ's like name. Right? Chapter and verse. I can chapter and you tell me the rest. I gave you the first two. Uh, let's see. Thou tell shalt me. not come at thy neighbor's oxen. Thou that was second. I already said that. <laughs> There's ten of them. Anyhow, you want me to take you to where it's at? Because we can go over that. Yes. What it actually does is shows you that you have need of a Savior. Because all ten of those commandments? No, give me the, give me the Ten Commandments. Exodus 20? Here. No, 
get your book, and get, put your book away. No, if you're listen, don't touch me. If you're going to preach to me, the tell word of God, the, the word of God's convicting his heart. If you're he going to preach to me, right with God, and he's not. If you're going to so preach to he me, he wants to act like he knows the Bible, and he doesn't. I'm just trying to help him. I know all ten. That's not the whole Bible. I don't have to pull the Bible out of my back pocket. You should. If you're a Christian, you just said you're a Christian. You should love the word of God. Let you say this. Oh, I love Satan. I feel bad for you. You're on your way to hell. You need to get right with God, my man. Tell me the Ten Commandments That's without the, your Bible. He's like making jokes, but you're being like, causing a problem with me. You know what I'm saying? I want to, he wants to preach to us. I, I agree with that. If he's a man of God, the Ten you, Hold on. Do you the think I can quote to you? Are pretty no. easy. The lie. whole book? I mean, is that even possible? Like no. I agree. No, I'm not going to let you touch my Bible. Listen, all the Ten Commandments? I'll give it to you. You know what my heart is? What the Ten Commandments? Are you guys serious? Yes, sir. Dude, his past says go fuck yourself. And I love saying, and I'm gay. I feel bad for you. You're on your way to hell. You're an enemy of God. What's that? You guys are not Christian. Certainly we are. Are you? You preach Christianity. Christianity preaches love. This is not are what you, you guys are you do. Are you sure? Because it says that Jesus upbraided them because they repented. Have you read the New Testament? Matthew chapter, that's Have you Matthew, read the New Testament? Matthew chapter 11. You know what it tells you to love everyone like God loves you. What chapter and verse? Tell me where to find that. You're showing me. You're showing me genuine Christianity. Hey, let me be good. I want to tell you the New Testament. He tells you straight up, love each other like I loved you. I'm loving you with the truth. Listen, if I let you, if I let you walk, yes, if I let you walk in deception and die and go to hell, that's not very loving. Without even trying to warn you, yes, the Bible says, love the world, rejoice in excellence. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I drove three and a half just to recite it to you. Oh, yeah, Tell me, tell me the ten commandments. What is the I have a question. Okay. Like me, I don't believe in it. Okay. No. But, but, but. Hey, when you put that in your pocket, maybe read it later. When I was younger, when I was 19, I went to war for this country. I went okay. to Afghanistan. Hey, that was no. That still doesn't save your soul. But isn't that a sin, though? What, going to war? I'm not going to war. Then you killed someone. Then you killed someone. Here's the thing. Regardless if you kill someone for whatever intent you did, you can still be forgiven if you're willing to turn from your sin and look to Jesus Christ for salvation. The magnitude of your sin and the multitude of your sin can never prevent you from being forgiven. The thing that will prevent you from being forgiven is an unwillingness to be forgiven. You have to look to Christ for salvation. That's right. I have one thing to say. I don't want to hear anything from you. Okay. I don't want to hear all of this. I'm a Christian. I was born. You're smoking cigarettes and drinking booze. I don't want to hear anything from you. You are offending me. That's because you're in your you, sin and you don't you, want to hear about your sin. You, I'm trying to tell you you can escape your sin and the punishment that's going to come upon you I for being moved you forward. are offending all Christians and we're right here. To a, there's no Christians here. What are you talking about? That's why you're here. That's that's you're smoking and drinking. You are you're smoking and drinking. You're at least you are you're judging. You are judging everybody. with righteous judgment. You are not the judge. You're not my judge. Yes, I'm telling you the judgment that Jesus is doing. You are not my judge. Jesus is going to judge you for your sin. Jesus is. Jesus will judge you for being a drunkard. Yes. First Corinthians chapter 6. No, he sure won't. It's his judgment. Turn from your sin, man. If you would only seek his son, come to the Lord Jesus and seek him that day for found him short. And so many people. So many people, the Bible speaks just like so many people are walking down the street today. God no, wants sir. to no, sir. 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 No, we will never leave you nor forsake you if you would only look for him. Come to the Lord. Now we're not out here to tell you if you give your life to Jesus, everything will be fine and peachy. But we are out here to tell you that if you go through a hard time in life and you give your life to Jesus, that God will be there through it all. God will be the best friend you can Slow ever have. Slow down a little bit when you're speaking so they can hear you. Just slow uh, down a little bit. I tell you what, you guys need a good band behind you.
No, sir. No, no. Oh, yeah. Only the Holy Ghost. That's all we need. We only need the Holy Ghost. That's it. No, sir. Okay, brother. No, keep preaching. Just slow it down a little bit. For the Bible says it's a point of command. I'm a believer, sir. Yes, sir. You're not getting drunk out here, are you? You see, folks, when we die and leave this earth, we're going to all stand before a holy and a just and a righteous God. That's right. God. Amen. And he's going to judge us. Just as we're going to be right now. He's going to judge us on the way to the earth. And my question is, what account do you give to God? Right. You might say that Jesus is alive, that he's the only truth. He's the only one who can save you, that you would always come to him. We see a lot of people out here who are partaking in the sinful portions of the world, and they think that they're right with God, but the Bible teaches us that if we are to be uh, saved, that, 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 that we would take on a new lifestyle, that we would crucify the old person and be a new person in the future. He hates Jesus! That's good. Here, here. Give me a little crack. I feel bad for this one. He hates Jesus so much. Seek him now. Jesus Christ is coming back. You can read your edge all you want, but it won't stop the word of God. Ah, she got to unscrew that bottom. Good. Now tighten it up. Really, the other way. Other way. Really good. Really tight. There you go. Yeah. You got this good? A little bit. You got it? Hold on to it. There you go, brother. You got it? So we got this fella. Jesus. 
Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world, the one oh, who died for men's sins. Yes, sir. Jesus is the Savior of the world? Yeah, he's also the judge of the world. He's going to judge men for their sins. Drunkenness, fornication, drug abuse, drug addiction. Jesus Christ is going to judge. <laughs> Here, let's just down a little bit. Yeah, man. Justin. Hallelujah. We're glad everybody could be here tonight. We want you to know that Jesus Christ died to save you from your sin. But you must be willing to turn from your sin, from your wickedness, from your drunkenness. That's all right. They can hear it further over there. Huh? Well, we had a lady that came two blocks away, actually, and heard everything we said. Guys, just move on. We didn't really know where it's sitting there. We don't want to hear that well, shit. We have a First Amendment right. We're going to uh, practice that. Well, we don't want to hear it, really. Well, we, we didn't come we're by invitation. We're all fucking sinners. No, we all, all have sin. Sinners. You could be saved wrong from your sin. No, you could be saved from your sin. No, sir. Wrong way to do it. I agree was, with it, but was, was Jesus doing it the wrong way in chapter 11 when it says that he abraded them because they repented not? Yes, he did. Jesus did it the wrong way? The yes. author of eternal salvation? You're doing it the wrong way. You're, t you're going on to say the, how Jesus... On the Jesus corner. On the that's, corner. That's exactly how we're supposed to Everyone's sinners. Be. No, so everyone gonna, has sinned. No. See, every, that shows that everyone has a need of salvation. But once you're saved, oh, you're yes, saved. Oh, yes, of course. Yes. Everyone needs but salvation. But once you're saved, you're saved from sin. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 says no drunkard shall inherit the kingdom of God. So, what about, what about, what about uh, uh, pre... Uh, Premarital sex? No, pre... Uh, fucking, uh, Pre-salvation? Before you're saved? No, pre-selection. Predestination. 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 I don't believe that. That's, that's Calvinism. That, I don't that is Calvinism, yes. yes. Calvinism is a false gospel that says you can continue in sin, even though the Bible says that well, you must obey you can, Jesus. You can continue in sin, but... Yes, it does. Calvinism certainly does. Listen, I went to a Christian school. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just asking. But if, if, you asking. Go to, if you go to a garage, does that make you a car? Absolutely not. So going to a person's school doesn't that's make us the a person, right? That's the simplest of argument. Yeah. Listen, so the simplest of argument. Let's say this. You you do know and understand the gospel. Absolutely. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you have obeyed the gospel. No, it's a choice. Right. And he says to repent, right? So what if what if us looking foolish here tonight? Because the Bible says that the, the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that perish. So this does look foolish, and we know that. We know that everybody here will hate us for standing here and preaching. But what if through that foolishness, God has appointed, if you believe precedent, predestination, predestined us to be here for you to hear this message so you can know that the life you're living isn't pleasing to God. And you need to dump out your booze, repent, and get right with God. Why do you come on a on an event like this? Why don't you? Why, are there, why, are there why people? You? Are there people on the streets when there's not an event like this? Well, of course, but why aren't you on the corner every weekend? Why aren't you? I am just not, just not here. Shove that fucking sign up your ass. I'm That's pretty vulgar thing. I'm, pretty vulgar. I'm not saying that. What's wrong with loving Jesus? I'm not saying that. What's that? What's wrong with loving Jesus and motorcycles? Look, no, there ain't nothing wrong with motorcycles. Hey, I don't see you up here. It's I vote every addiction. weekend. I didn't say I was oh, up here. Hey, you can shove that fucking Listen, microphone up your fucking Look at your foul mouth. Your heart is wicked. Yeah, what are you going to do you about need, it? You need to be born again. Oh, Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. It just shows that you need to be born again. You need to get right with God. I've been born again. No, sir. You wouldn't be talking like that if you were. The Bible says if any man seemeth religion and bridleth not his mouth, his religion is vain. It just shows that he's not born again. I'm already going to fucking hell. Well, you need to change that destination. That's why we're here. We're here for you. So you don't have to go to hell. So you can become born again. You can get saved. We're here for you. We're here so you can repent and be converted. But there's a lot of people here that don't like you That's all right. We, listen, Jesus said the world would hate us because it hated him. We already know there's lots of people here today. But that's all right. You still hate him. What's that? pretty brave to come out here. I'm led by God. And listen, he told us not to take a thought for our life. What's going to happen? We're going. Our bodies are going to destroy. He said, don't, don't fear those who destroy the body, but fear him who cast both body and soul into hell's fire. What can, what's the worst that can happen? I get killed? I'm going to heaven. What's it matter? But what's the worst that can happen to those who don't believe the message? They're going to hell, eternally, separated from God. That's why we're here. Because no matter what risk it comes to, no matter what risk, what's that? But that still don't mean they're going to heaven. Listen, it, it seems, it seems no. We can't be here. No, no, he's, he's actually who I want to talk to. I want to talk to people like him. Because the point is, the sinner needs to repent. The sinner needs to get right with God. That's who the message is for. It's not for the people who already believe. Jesus didn't come to save the righteous. He came to save the sinner. 
I know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You need to get right with God today. You need to turn from your sin. Believe upon Jesus Christ. He died on the cross to save you from your sin. Yes, sir. I believe in him. Believe and don't save you. You gotta repent. You gotta, you gotta be. Listen, your belief doesn't save you. It doesn't matter. The demons believe and they tremble. You have to be willing to repent, to turn from your sin. Turn. You don't see me standing in city with a. That's because you don't love him. Jesus said, "If you love me, you'll keep my commandments." He who's my friend does those things that I say. Jesus said that. Jesus said that. You need to get right with God, my man. One day your heart's going to stop. And you're, you know, if you're standing here shaking your fist at God, I'm going to live my life. Believing, believing in Him is not going to bring salvation. You have to repent of your sin. You have to turn away from your sin. You have to be willing to dump out the booze and live a life for God. Exactly, but I'm saying what you were, what you were saying is very offensive to the people that don't believe. I'm saying it's just it's just being out here straight up. Fuck you if you're not if you're not with us. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It is. Do you is? Do you believe? Do you believe that the message Jesus preached was offensive? No, I don't believe it. I know it. Okay. And the demons know it too. That's right. Okay. But you guys right here on the corner doing the same thing. One o'clock in the morning. Doing the same thing Jesus would do. You have a, a you have a motivation. Okay, and, and what is it? So you would repent of your sin and be saved. I've already repented, but no, you're not repenting. Look, I've repented. I've been baptized in the in the, in the blood of and Jesus you Christ. Your steadfastness. Yes, I have. You fell from your okay. steadfastness. Yes, I have. But it's called forgiveness and sins. There's no forgiveness unless you repent. You've never been forgiven. Yes. Have you been forgiven after, from after, what? After I, I was a drug addict. I was, listen, I was the worst. Of okay. So what is the difference? You don't go back to it. You guys are wonderful. I'm, like I'm not like a, going listen, back from yes, it. I right fall there. from it. No, I right fall there. from the path. You're living a life of sin, my man. Yes, I am. And you got to turn from that. Okay. okay. But you on the corner right now I'm telling you, is not going to help me at certainly. all. Who else is telling you this message today? The Lord. When? And how? Every day. And how? Every day. Okay. Well. And I know it. Okay. But you on the corner is it's, not helping yes, me at it all. It certainly is. No, the fuck yes. it isn't. You're, hear, you're hearing it even louder now. Because I've he's, been here. Listen, he's even getting more and more drastic with you. He's using more and more drastic no. method, methods to reach out to you. No, yes. no, it's not. Certainly. No, it's not. Certainly. You guys are the, are the Church of Latter-day Saints. No. And fuck, yes, you are. What's, no, what's that's the Mormons. Mormons. We're, we're not a Mormon. We believe the Bible. Here, you want to see my Bible? Yeah, you know the Bible. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. You're not elevate. You're not. What are you? Jesus. I just go to non denomination. I know. I go to. I go to a small church. So what is it? It's the church of Jesus. No, I'm not a Methodist. I would say if I if I was a denomination, uh, man, I don't even know one that I fully agree with. I, I, I read the Bible and believe it. That's that's a simple suggestion. So does the fucking devil. Okay. Yeah, but you can't, you can't he, doesn't, that as an argument. he doesn't practice it. See, we can't be hearers of the word. We have to be He knows it better than you do. Yes, he does know it, but he doesn't practice it. We can't be hearers of the word. We must be doers of the word. Absolutely, I understand that. And I know I need it, but you on the corner of State Street and fucking North Park Road will not... Do that shit. No one else was loving your soul enough to talk to you about Jesus and I tell you that's your sin and you know, at the risk of offending. That you were sinning today. I told you to get right with God. Days, weeks ago. Uh, today. Weeks ago. Today. Who told you today? The in Lord the reminds me in, every in, single day that I'm fucking up. Every day. Have you not? Not you. Have you ever heard the verse that says wisdom cries out in the streets? No. Don't go. No. That's you're pulling it from context. What's the, you, you're then, pulling then, it from context. Tell me the proper context. Now. You know the proper context. And I'm telling you. Pulling that shit. Listen. Okay, I went to a Christian high school, very first Christian academy. What's your name? I'm Ryan. Ryan. Ryan, my name's Sam. Sam. Listen. You know Erie Christian Academy? No, I don't. I'm not from here. Summer Township. Listen, I, I, I drove from Uniontown, Pennsylvania to be here tonight. 
just the, the, the Warren sinners, because I believe that men that don't hear this message and don't respond to the gospel go to hell, because that's what Jesus does. Of course. So because I love every soul here, even when they hate me, I want them to hear this I don't message. hate you. Well, lots do. Let me tell you, I don't hate you. Lots I do. I just feel like your behavior is hatred. Your behavior is hatred. I don't hate you. Even, even if it's, it's what you do. Even if it's what Jesus did. It's not going to happen. Again. And Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, taking that out of the context. Jesus even said the world would hate us for his words. Yes, and you were taking that out of context. That's the very, that's the same. If you could give me the right context. <laughs> no, no, no. Give me the right context. That's what, First John taking that out of that? No, no, no. That, that, that is taking it out of context. Okay. Well, give me the right context if it's out of context. The entire, the entire new revelation happened so long ago so 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 revelation happened at the beginning of new revelation the new yes you're talking in circles now man no what i'm telling you is that i'm saying revelation everyone thinks that's the last book written no it's actually one of the first books written so i'm saying what you're saying could be true but it's it's way back. It's, this isn't even in Revelations. Listen, it's in the uh, I believe it's the book of John, chapter fifteen, I think. When that's, he, a new, that's a new revelation. Jesus, Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he prays for them, and he says I, he's not going to take them out of the world, and he's not praying for the world. So as long as people are in the world, Jesus isn't praying for them, but he's praying for those who are his disciples. And he said, what did he say made you his disciple? When you continue he, to he his work. He was a disciple every nation. Yes. But how, how does a, how's one disciple? They have to be willing to be obedient. Jesus became the author of eternal salvation. And you really think this is trying to make people obedient? This is exactly. Half drunk then, then, and, and yes. being obedient? Yes. Listen, the first thing the first thing Jesus' church did when they received the Holy Ghost, guess what they did? Went out to the street with many nations and preached the gospel very loud and very disruptive. That's what his the first You're not thing. disruptive. You're not very loud. You're not making a statement. Listen, I am on your side. Trust me. I am a fucked up Christian. Okay? And you need to get right again. And I do. And I was there. And my parents, my parents condemn me for it. But I'm just saying, what you're doing... It's exactly what Jesus did. Exactly. It's, it's not what he and it's, it's what he sent his disciples out to do. When, what did he send him out to do? He said he shall give him power to be his witness on the Jerusalem, Judea, every, and all he, he would the end of the world. Disciple every nation, mm -hmm. baptizing them, teaching them to obey the things that he commanded. Right? Right? What you're saying, I'm just saying. What you're saying is true, but it's very offensive and it's very forthright. And it should be. And it should. Don't get me wrong. It should be. But it is. It is. You gotta understand. What kind of criteria are you working with? What do you mean? With what, sinners, what, just like Jesus came to say. Everyone's a sinner. Everyone a sinner. has sinned. No, I'm a sinner. Listen, yes, you are. Jesus, no, you listen. will always be a you sinner will, until you, so. you That's not yes, what the Bible teaches. Yes, Jesus, no. Listen, the Bible says his name shall be called Jesus because he saves his people from their sin. Yes, but you will always be a sinner. First John, you always have to ask for First John 1 9. Yes. First, I know. 3 7. He and you always have to ask forgiveness. You always have to ask forgiveness. He says, if you sin, not when you sin. There's a big difference. You will be, you're, you're, you're capable. Sin. You're capable you of will sin. That doesn't, listen. Because we're not under law, but under grace, sin shall no longer have dominion over your body. When you receive the grace of God, which is a power from God over sin, not a blanket that covers sin. Well, going back to Calvinism, do you accept it? Or is no, he, I don't believe or is he coming on? He, do I accept he God, or first. is he God to me? He Does calls he first. choose you? He, it says that he chose you, yes. So that's Calvinism. How, how do you know you're chosen if you're in the midst of sinners? John 3, 16. For God so loved the whole world that he gave us the that whoever should so believe in him. So he gives that option uh, to right. everybody, right? That's, that's gone with Calvinism. That is gone oh, with Calvinism. And he chooses us after that. We don't choose him. I had a I had a I had a Bible case in high school that says God chaser. And my teacher says, Are we a God chaser or are we a God pursuer? Can I ask you? Kind of makes you think, are we a God pursuer or are we a God chaser? Does he accept us or do we choose him? Well, here's here's how I see Calvin. His chosen are in Christ. Now he gives that choice to choose Christ, 
to every man, whosoever will. When they, when they choose Christ, God chose them because he was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. So we have the free will to choose Jesus Christ. But if you don't choose Christ, you're just not chosen. You're not chosen because you're not in the beloved. Which is predestination. Christ is predestined. The, the way is predestined. No, 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 no. Yes, the no, way. No, 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 the no, no, way no. is predestined. Jesus Christ being the way, the only way. That's the predestination. The way, the truth, and the life. No one's to come to the Father that's, except through me. That's the predestined yes. way. Now, the yes. choice, the free will is given to all of humanity. Whosoever will receive or reject is, Jesus but Christ. But his free will destined is free will. Does it ever blood of Christ? The Bible says all men have a measure of faith. Now we're responsible for where we place it. We're saying a lot of stuff right now. Now with that measure of faith, we're all accountable for where we place that faith. Some place it in the Big Bang. Others place it in God. Listen, I believe... I'm just making sure my girlfriend's back there. Because she doesn't believe this. Listen. I know I'm drinking. I know I'm swearing. But she just brought home tarot cards. Get them out. See, that's the devil attacking you, my man. And I told her that. My my great my grandfather is is saying, you know, regular playing cards are the, are the devil's cards. I I was born in the Church of Christ. Trust me, I understand what you're saying. I understand everything. But it's very hard to explain to a non-believer that... Well, see, and it, there's the issue. If you're a Christian, the Bible says not to be unequally yoked together. Unequally yoked. I know. Yeah, we're not together. Christ. We're not together. Listen, and and two years ago, I was, I was so, I was so with Christ. I was so with Christ. And then things happened. But, and that's, that's the war. Listen, that's the war that you're in. But the Bible says with every temptation, he provides a way out. You can get right with God tonight. Continue walking with him. Dedicate your life to him and live a holy life to the glory of God. And your testimony would be some crazy I'm trying. preacher. I'm trying. Talk to me that night, and I decided I was going to follow God again. Listen, I want to get. I want to give you a gospel, John, and I know you've read it. Listen, I know you've read it. But I want you to stick this in your pocket. Put that in your pocket. And whatever you're doing tonight, you're going to do. I'm not going to stop you. But my prayer is that you would reach in your pocket tomorrow morning, see that, and remember the conversation you had, and remember the foolish way that God tried to reach out to you, so you would hear and consider, consider your your position with God. I'm just saying that what you're doing is right, but it's not. It's not correct. It's not accepted by the world. That's just a simple it's really, it's really hard. It's really hard. What you're doing is correct, but it's not right. Not down here, not on North Park Row and State Street. Should we stand in front of churches where everybody's saved and do it? Is that the no, Jesus? No, listen, no, we're, no, called, no, should, we're called to go and preach to sinners. Now think of this. Everyone's a sinner at all. Okay, well, you can't come down here in, in the belly of the devil. Yes, that's exactly. Listen, no, no, you can't. the church in Revelation, he says they set up their seat where the throne of Satan was. That was where they were called to go. Satan's and that's where everywhere. We're you can't come down here. He's not everywhere. He's not omnipotent. Satan Only is God is. He, there's demons he is, everywhere. He is omnipotent. He He's is not omnipotent. omnipotent. Yes, Only is. God is. I, I, I disagree. He's, don't, don't give Satan that much power. He doesn't have it. Listen, when you're in Christ and you're hidden in Christ, you're protected from Satan. I ain't scared of no devil that's here tonight. I'm, I'm protected by the blood of Jesus. And listen. Oh, listen, the blood of Jesus when, everything. When you, I know. Listen, but, and the devil wants to lure you out of that. And he's, he's doing a good job. But what I'm saying is, you down here, me as a Christian, okay, so I'm a lukewarm Christian right now. And, and Jesus says, what does he say? He will spat you, you out of yeah. Okay. Yeah. you. Yeah. You know that. Okay, I am a lukewarm Christian right now. But as a lukewarm Christian, seeing this, what do you think it does for you? I think it convicts your heart. I, th I think. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It I, makes me hate you. And you just said you didn't hate me previously. But in the Bible, again, the Bible. It makes me hate you, what you're doing. And the Bible says. The people that actually don't know, like Sarah, she's bringing home tarot cards. Like, she doesn't know. And I know, but I'm just, I'm, I'm choosing. I am choosing the path. I am choosing the path. She doesn't know the path. So seeing you down here makes her choose a, a way different path.
Do you think that people were choosing a path regardless of if they hear something? Like she was choosing that path before we even started preaching. Yeah, and it's going to make her even go further. No, sir, it's not yes, possible. Yes, it will. Yes, she's it already. Will. Yes. Listen, she's already. She's gone. already gone. This is. Yeah. This could be the I'm last. Try. This, this. This could be the last ditch effort that God's given to her. Uh, listen, how, how much more clear do you have to get that God is trying to reach you than a, a bullhorn in science? And, I, and I've tried to talk to her for the past three years, and she will not have it. So, you guys on the corner, I'm telling you, you guys. Listen, listen. You guys with signs on your on your on your body. What would be the best way to share the gospel right now? Not like this. Just tell me the best way. I don't have an answer for you, but I'm, I'm telling you what. So we'll it's, work with what we got. We'll work with what we got. This. Okay, it's not and, this. Until we perfect it, we're going to work with what we have. Listen, because I, I, I'm 24 years old. For my first 18 years of life, I grew up in a Christian household. And this is not it. This is not it. I'm what, telling you right now. I agree with what you're trying to do, but this isn't it. But what standard are we using to judge that this is There's it? no standard. The Bible's the same. The scripture. Right, but then you're, then so, you're getting into theology. Yes, and, of course. Yeah, because the whole point is Christians are to be obedient to Jesus Christ. Of so, course. But, so if but, the world doesn't, if the, just because the world doesn't like it, if Jesus said that we should do it, but the world says we shouldn't, who should we listen to? Now you're getting into Christians and Catholics and uh, theologians. And no, just the world, just the world and Christianity, obedient to Jesus or obeying the world. Because Jesus said we couldn't serve two masters. That's correct. We'd love one and hate the other. All right. Correct. He said if you love the world, you're an enemy of God. Right. He said, come out from amongst them, touch not the unclean thing, be ye separate. Right. He, like those are things that Jesus said. So his church was called to go out into all the world, preach the gospel, proclaim God's good word, teach them to obey whatever Jesus has commanded. So we'll, we'll say this, out of all the Christians you know, who has been obedient to that? People that you see standing on the street, literally doing what Jesus said, teaching people to obey what Jesus has commanded, or those who are just going to church. When did you get saved? About 10 years ago. And I got saved from a lot of sin, my man. I'm 38. So at 28, you got saved. Yes, 27. I know a lot of people my age, I'm 24, that are absolutely making the Lord cry, okay? And I grew up in the church. I don't know what to say to you. It's hard. It's really hard. But I'm telling you right now, I don't, I don't I personally feel like this is right. I used to play drums for, for Elevate Church. You're not around. You're not from around here. So LV Church was a big, big conglomerate that separated to a smaller, but now it's huge. Yeah. Long story short, I used to play for that, you know, that church. I don't play for them anymore. There's a lot of... Do you know the parable that Jesus told about the seeds? The different soils they fell on? Yes. One of those was, you know, yes. the cares of the world choked out that seed. That's yes. exactly what happened. When you was walking with the Lord, you allowed temptation and the cares of this world to choke out that seed. What's the, re what's the response when you know that? Okay, now this goes back to free will and choice. You could choose to continue in your sin, right? And just hope one day you're going to get right. Or you could radically give your life, surrender your life to Jesus Christ and just start. If your eye causes you to sin, cut it out, but cast see, it from you. See, that's your the hand. thing. That's the thing. I did do that 10 years ago. But you're not doing it now. Why? Because you chose sin. You allow temptation Everyone, to free Every human chooses sin. That's no, sir. original sin. No, sir. Original I, sin. There's no such thing as original sin. Yes, there is. That's a false. That, listen, that's no, false. No, no, no. There's no, no, such no. thing. There, yes. there is original no. sin. No. So babies die and go to hell. Now you're bringing up Calvinism. That's right. If and that's where original sin comes from. Well, they're in Catholicism. Babies don't die and go to hell. In fact, the Bible says that God go? created man upright. But babies go to heaven. They haven't sinned against God. They have not willfully sinned against God. They haven't had an actual choice, yes or no. Babies have, they have a neutral choice. Yes, they're neutral. That's right. But they're. So, so what makes them go to heaven? What makes them make yes? Why not? Why not know? Why not know? Well, because they haven't. God only sends people to hell for transgressing against His commandments, not because but they according, haven't. But done according it. to original sin and Adam and Eve, they've already. Everyone has it's imputed to them. Sin. That's only if you believe that sin's been imputed to them. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says death has been imputed. Okay, but you have to be a baby and actually. No, 
acknowledge this no, you're, and know it. No, you're, yeah, that's right. You have to acknowledge sin and choose it. And they don't. That's right. So, so, they, so what makes them they, go positive? They Why not negative? Because the temptation of sin in the world. You are born. You were born into sin. It's in the world. That doesn't mean that you born, you're born in sin with a sinful nature. Listen, at the end of the day, I told you what I told you. I would rather be safe and in the ground and nothing rather than... But that's not what's going to happen, is it? But what I'm saying is I'd rather be safe in the ground and, you know, rather than... An eternal fire. That's right. And that's why there's an urgency for us to be out here. But it's that eternal fire that is really controversial. And that's, listen, that's why we're out here. Because not only do we believe in Jesus, but we believe in what he preached. And he did warn of the, the devil believes in, you can't, you can't say that. The devil yes. believes in Jesus. But he doesn't, he does. he's not willing to repent. But he used to no be repentance. an angel. He was a fallen angel. And he's not repenting. There's no repentance. No, he's in. not. He's because reprobate. He wants every soul to him. I understand that. Now, and when we watch horror movies, I understand that. She's like, oh, you know, I'm glad I'm, you know, whatever. I understand that. You know, I'm glad I'm on Christ's side. But when I come, but you're to, not. I am. I'm a Luke. I, I'm lukewarm. But I'm on the side. I, I am on the side. Whether when it comes to who dies and uh, where, who goes where. You, yeah, you believe what 100%. he said. I, I, I'll say that, but that doesn't mean you're on his side. Because Jesus said if you were on his side, you do the things he says. He said those I are try, right. But I'm human, and I ask, I beg are you, forgiveness. Are you telling me you don't have the power right now to not drink that beer? Yes, I do. Well, wait a minute now. You're knocking him for drinking beer? But the Lord Jesus Christ made the water and the wine. Yes, so don't give me some crap. That's, that. that's not alcoholic wine. What do you, wine's not alcohol? No, listen, if you look at the word wine in the Bible, same word used, that's unfermented. You guys, you. see, no, you guys interpret that listen, everything no, different. Listen, no, if you, listen, if, listen. When did he, when did he turn the water into wine? At the wedding, right? It's a wedding. It's okay. first, it's now listen, miracle. and it yes. says all the wine that was already there was already drunk, right? Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 says, The drunkard shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So if Jesus turned it in... Hold on. No, listen. If Jesus, turned it in, if Jesus turned water into alcoholic wine, that means that he was promoting them get, continuing to get drunk. Now, those that would mean that the two verses contradict each other. That can't be true. So the, the word wine there is the same instance into where it says that the wine was in the cluster. Okay, so what about when they put him up on the cross and they gambled for his clothes? And they, they gambled. Him. Vinegar. They gamble. Uh, vinegar and water. Yes. They gamble for his clothes. Is that gambling wrong? Yes, but Jesus didn't gamble. It was the soldiers, the ones that nailed him to the cross. All right. Well, hey, listen, it, it was great talking to you. Great talking to you, dude. But that conversation just went south. I'm not going to get But you don't have to. You see, sir, the, the little bit of alcohol you have left in here is not the word. The consequences right. they'll bring. Want to get it in Sir, just as easy as this. It says if you would choose to dump it out and never pick it up again, you seek save the me. Lord. No, you That's have to seek the me. Lord from that point on. I got sir. saved a long time ago. But Did you continue me. in your steadfastness? What? The Bible warns us of not falling from our steadfastness. So if you got saved a long time ago, in order for you to believe that you're able to, uh, to know that you're saved today, is that you continued in that steadfastness. If you didn't, if you went back to the, and Peter warned of it, right. like a, a hog back to the mud or back to the slop or a dog back to his vomit, yeah. it's that's actually the warning of losing salvation. So, and he said, you know, we should examine ourselves to see if we're in the faith. Did the Bible say one saved, always saved? No, it doesn't. That's a false doctrine. It doesn't say that? No, it doesn't. And it, there's actually, it, it talks about, you know, um, uh, for those who sin willfully, it says there's no longer a sacrifice for their sins. So if we can, if we think that we're going to get one over on God, I guess you could say, we think that we're going to, you know. I'm not trying to fool him. I know that? he knows. I know he knows exactly what I'm doing. Well, see, that, that's the thing. That's that's what should bring the fear of God into our heart. That He does know. He even knows the intent of our heart. He knows if we say, "Oh God, I wish I, I wish I wasn't drinking, or I wish I could stop." He knows whether we can or not. The fact is, you have the power to dump that out. I could stop. Yeah, that's right. I know, and, but you choose. Like it's not that strong. Where I yeah, that's right. Like you I have, have to, you like have the ability. I'm not an alcoholic, and I'm not. You just feel it. You just choose not to live for yeah. Jesus Christ at certain times. But the Bible says this in, in Hebrews 5.9. He became the author of eternal salvation to them which obey him. So the 
it's implying that those who... So he's saying I shouldn't drink beer. And you should obey Jesus. I'm saying you should you should see your body as a temple of God and do what Christ calls you to do. You shouldn't drink beer. Because, think of this. Is beer really that bad for you? I mean, I don't know the medicinal purposes. I'm sure, like, uh, think of this. I'm not saying that either. Think of this. Um, and Paul told Tim Timothy um, to have a little wine for his stomach, right? So people say, oh, you should drink booze all the time. That's not what he's saying. If it, if it was a, med a medicinal yeah. thing, like if you had to take NyQuil, that's not a sin. I understand. But drinking drinking beer, what's one beer lead to? Another beer. What's, you know, it's, it's and think of this. That's right about 10. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's just opening, it's compromise. And that's what makes it sin. It's compromising, it's conforming, and, and being willing to, uh, you know, to start. It's like uh, if, if you were, okay, if you had a, a nice looking woman who lived next to you,